Welcome to Mission Independent Baptist Church, our Friday evening service, May 26, 2023. Um, Want to thank all the people in the military for Memorial Day, for them dying and giving their lives for our freedom here in this country and around the world. Uh, a lot of veterans and, uh, you know, give thanks to a veteran on Monday. They, they, a lot of people fought, a lot of people suffered, and uh, you know what, God, God helped them. God helped us get our freedom here in this country. and. We need to remember that. A lot of people forget about the, our freedoms we have. Somebody died for the freedoms we have now. And give God, God the glory, and thank a veteran on Monday. Amen. Uh, again, uh, we want to uh, say hi to Miss Mary Ann in uh, Washington State. Uh, she sent us a beautiful card here, a nice card, and she supports us. We want to thank her, and uh, may the Lord bless her there in Washington State. It's beautiful like to go visit where she's at up there. It's very nice. It's Washington State. Not Washington, D.C. Washington State. And again, the people in Texas, uh, Steve Sajak, uh, Pastor uh, Travers Gilbert, Rogers Baptist Church, uh, Pastor Thomas, Mrs. Thomas, uh, all of Mr. Lorleen's family in Texas, Allison, continued healing for her, Mother Sandy, her family, Cindy, and the different people down there. For Miss Rose, Lydia, and Elijah, we pray for their safety. I think not sure where they're at, but Lord knows and uh, that he'd continue to bless them and keep them in as well. All the people who graduated, uh, that they continue working in these young people's lives and God will give them direction which way to go if, you know, job or, you know, continued in uh, college or whatever God wants. You want to go, whatever God wants you to be, be what God wants you to be. Amen. We're going to sing page 204, To God Be the Glory. 204, To God Be the Glory. To God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his Son, who yielded his life and atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood, to every believer the promise of God. The vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Great things he has taught us, great things he hath done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport, when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Praise God and praise Jesus for all the great things he has done for me, for you, for everybody. Amen. Amen. I'm going to pick up where uh, we left off on Sunday. But we're going to back up a little bit. Uh, ph uh, Philippians Philippians uh, chapter 2. And we're going to go from verse 12 through 18. Philippians 2, 12 through 18. 
I'm going to pray. Dear Lord, thank you, Lord, for the people here. Bless the people here, Lord. I pray for your, uh, I pray for Miss Lurleen. I don't know what happened. She had to leave abruptly. I pray that you be with her. I pray if it's an emergency, you know all, Lord, and help her and protect her and help her with her needs there, Lord. And bless us tonight with the service of the Holy Spirit. Speak your words, Lord, but not mine. And Lord, this, uh, instruct us and teach us and edify us with your word, with your holy Bible, Lord. And Lord, I pray that uh, you'd get all the glory in Jesus' precious name. Amen. All right, Philippians 2, 12 through 18. It says, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmurings and disputings, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world, holding forth the world of life, that I may, rejo that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Yea, and if I be offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all. For the same cause also do you, do ye, joy and rejoice with me. So, you know, it says here in verse 12, it says, Wherefore, my beloved, so this is to say, people, uh, you know, uh, in Jesus Christ, and it says, the verse before says, And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So every, t every knee is going to bow, every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen? And it says, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed. So, you know, you have to trust God, you have to trust Jesus, you have to live through him, you have to do his will, what he wants us to do. We don't do really what we want to do, we need to do what Jesus wants us to do. And it says, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. So, you know, Paul, I, this is Paul. He's in his absence and Jesus is in, in heaven. And, uh, uh, you know, we have to work out our uh, fear, well, work out our salvation with fear and trembling. We have to show ourselves approved. You know, we need to put our work, put, Put put your words into action for Christ. If you, you know you want to you got to tell people about Jesus Christ, how He died for their sins, how they can be in heaven one day, how they, they don't have to go to a devil's hell where you know God prepared for the devil and his angels. He wasn't prepared for man, but people who don't trust the Lord Jesus Christ end up in hell. So we need to tell others about Him. You know, is your attitude in Christ? It should be. You know, is our attitude in Christ? I mean. We're supposed to all the time think of the Lord and you know think of others and try to tell people about Him, and uh, you know it, 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 we have to be in the will of God. Ephesians two, eight and nine. Let's look at Ephesians two, eight and nine. Ephesians two, eight and nine. It says, "For by grace are you saved through faith." So, grace of God, you're saved. By your faith in Jesus Christ, but what he did on the cross, and that not of yourselves. It's nothing, nothing what I did, what you did, what anybody could do. It's what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary, shed his blood. It's, it is the gift of God. So it is the gift of God. If you're saved, thank the Lord Jesus Christ and God the Father, not of works, lest any man should boast. You know, it's gift of God. We're saved by God's grace and God's grace only. You know, it's his, his will. And then it says, uh, you know, uh, Isaiah, let's look at uh, Isaiah 46, 9 and 10. So back in our text in Ephesians 2, it says, Wherefore, my blood, you always obey, and my, obey, not as in my presence only, but now more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So, you know, you got to work, you got to work for Jesus. You got to get out there and tell people you need to do his will and not your will. You have to live for him. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So it's God that worketh in, in us. It's not, you know, Jesus Christ lives in you. you he, he lives in you. He lives in Jesus and the Father. You do his will, and it's for his good pleasure. 
what he wants to do with us. So let's look at Isaiah 46, 9 and 10. Isaiah 46, 9 and 10. Isaiah 46, verses 9 and 10. Now it's God's pleasure. Um, we need to shine the light. We need to shine Jesus upon people. Isaiah 46, 9 and 10 says, Remember the former things of old. So, for I am God and, and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me. You know, there's no other. God is God. There is nothing like God. God's the only one who can save you and say, be able to take you to heaven with him. You know, God can heal. God can do what he wants. So, you know, people in this world, you know what, they don't believe in God. God will show, them, show himself real to them one way or the other, either to salvation or to damnation. Declaring the end from the beginning. So he's the only person, he knows the end of a matter from the beginning. You know, you, know, you, you don't know. Your day starts out one way and ends another. You don't know how your day is going to know. But God knows how your day is going to go and end. And it says, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient, time, ancient times, the things that are not yet done. So from ancient times, he knew what was going to happen a thousand, three thousand, four thousand, five. Gee, God knew what was going to happen right now, today. You know, It's for God's pleasure, not our pleasure. And then it says in, um, I am God and there's none like me, declaring the end from the beginning, from ancient times, the things that are not yet done saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. So it's for God's pleasure. Everything that's done is God's pleasure. You know, he wants to see. If you're, if you're serving God, and you're reading your Bible, and you're studying, and you're telling people about Jesus, you're witnessing, you're lifting his name up, God's, God, God, God has pleasure in that. But if you're not, he's not having pleasure in that. Let's look at Luke 12, 30 to 35. Luke 12. 30, 35. Luke 12, 30 to 35 says, For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your father father knoweth that you have need of these things. So, you know, all the nations, these people are, you know, food, clothes, money fame, fortune, you know, you know, the, the essential things is food, clothes, somewhere to sleep, you know, we have all these things, and God knows you have, you need these things, God gives you, you know, uh, today at work, there was a pigeon, they called, they go, oh, there's a baby pigeon, he's suffering, I go, he's suffering where, and they said, up on the stairs, so I went and seen him, he was there, I go, he don't look like he's suffering, he just looks like he don't know how to get out of there, so I brought a box, and I got him in the box, and I put him outside, and the lady called the bird control or something, or pigeon control, and then I come down, and then like 20 minutes later, the lady's like, oh, I'm here from pigeon control because the pigeon's hurt. And I'm like, the pigeon's not hurt. I put him in a box, put him outside. Well, I got to see if he's injured or that. So I took her outside. She, she's trying to catch him with a towel. She's trying to squeeze him and throw him in a bag. And I'm thinking, well, I, I can get the box and we can get him back in there. So I get him in the box, and here she takes him, and it's a pigeon. I got friends who were from the military. They got legs missing. They're, they're veterans. They served, and they can't even get, get any kind of discount on rent, rent and stuff. I mean, the world, things are backwards in this world. Luke uh, 1230 says, you know, God knows what these things but rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. So, you know, you need to seek the kingdom of God. You need to seek Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and everything will be added unto you. It says, fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. You know, God wants to save your soul. He wants to take you to heaven. You know, little flock, little as much with God in it, so that you have and give alms. So give alms is, uh, you know, give to the cha give charity. Give to, to the poor. Provide yourselves with bags which wax not old, a treasure in heaven that faileth not, where no thief approaches, neither moth corrupts. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So, you know, where your treasure is, it's your heart. If you're out, if you're up to going out and telling people about Jesus and handing out tracts, your heart's going to be with the Lord. That's where your treasure, you know, you're not saving things for this life. You save and you save. When you're young, you want a lot of things. You collect stuff, and you know what? 
You get old, you want to give it all away. You have too much stuff, you don't need it. What do you need it for? You're going to die soon, and you know where's it going to go? It'll probably go to somebody who you don't want to give it to anyway. So, you know, you have to do things which are going to be profitable for you in heaven, where you're going to be spend eternity if you trust Jesus Christ. So, but if you haven't, you you rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. So you seek Jesus Christ while He's near. You got to seek the Lord when he, while He's near. You know. You know, God gives us what we need. Your treasures in heaven. He uses you for His pleasure, for His good will. Amen. You know, God uses us, and uh, He uses us for His glory. Let's look at Revelation four eleven. Revelation four eleven. You know, we need to shine as lights for Jesus Christ to tell others. Time is short. Revelation 4.11 says, thou, thou art worthy, O Lord. To Jesus Christ, God is worthy. Amen. To receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are, are, they are and were created. So for God's pleasure, you, me, everybody in the whole world is created. We're supposed to serve God and give him the glory. Amen. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's about Jesus Christ and God the Father. Amen. We need to give thanks. We have to give God his glory. Let's look at uh, 2 Corinthians 7.15. We got to shine. We got to be that light for Jesus Christ in this dark world. You know, I had a few days off. I treasured God's things. I went to uh, uh, this place, Independence Grove, and walk. It's beautiful. You see God's creation, the, the, the lake, the flowers, the trees. It's beautiful. It's just uh, it's peaceful. It's like going back to the Garden of Eden. 2 Corinthians 7.15 says, And his inward affection is more abundant towards you, whilst he remembereth you know, the obedience of you all, how with fear and trembling you received him. So, you know, we fear and trembling, you know, you used to get saved. You trust the Lord. You, you know, you fear God and keep his commandments. You trust what he did on the cross and your obedience to Jesus Christ. You have to live for Jesus. You receive Jesus and you trust in him and you live for him. Let's look at First uh, Thessalonians 5.18. First Thessalonians 5.18. It says, in everything, so everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. You know, you got to rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, give thanks to God always for everything, good or bad. God knows what's going to happen. Give thanks to God, give thanks to Jesus Christ. Um, let's look at Ephesians 5.17. Ephesians 5.17 5.17 says Wherefore Wherefore be not unwise but understanding what the will of the Lord is. So the will of the Lord is you to serve God and keep his commandments and tell others about Jesus Christ. You know, will of the Lord be wise, understand what God wants from you. You know, God wants something from me, from you. He uses us, whatever abilities we have. I can reach certain people for him. You can reach certain people from him. You have to you have what God gives you. You have to be wise and have the understanding what the God gives you, you know, to reach other people for him. Let's look at, so back in our text, so... For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasures. You know, you got to be wise. Don't be unwise, but be wise, understanding what the God's will is for your life. You know, you have to know. You know God's will in you. No complaints, no arguments. Uh, let's look at verse 14 in Philippians 2. It says, do all things without murmurings and disputings. So you want to do things for Christ and... You get along with the people in the church. We want to go out and hand out tracts. We want to tell people about Jesus. 
we need to rejoice in the Lord. You know, we have to be happy. We can't, uh, we don't want to do things where, you know, be all, oh, I got to go hand out tracts today or I got to go visit this sick person in the hospital. No, we should be happy. We can tell them about Jesus Christ. We can pray with them and, you know, God can help them and God, God will bless us and he'll, he'll be he'll happy with us. Let's look at 1 Peter 4.9. 1 Peter Four nine. You know we have to do things without murmurings and disputing. So without complaining or you know don't squabble, don't complain. You know what? You're going to heaven. <laughs> you complain, you're going to heaven. That's the that's the thing. You're already going no matter what. You're blessed and you know you're gonna be forever with Jesus. Amen. So don't do things you know murmurings and disputings. So let's look at First Peter four nine says using hospitality one to another without grudging so grudging you know without you know self-sacrifice uh, being selfish complaining <coughs> resentment we got to be happy doing things for god amen we got to be friendly we got to be hospitable we got to show love to each other we got to you know help each other you know this world's going to give us tr trials and tribulations, but we got to be a good cheer because Jesus said he overcame the world, and if he lives in us, we can overcome the world till he comes. Amen? So, mm -hmm. you know, it's the will of the Lord. We have to, you know, don't squabble, don't complain. You know, let's look at Moses. You know, the children of Israel, they were complaining and squabbling. Let's look at uh, <coughs> Numbers 21, 5 through 9. Numbers... 21, Numbers 21, 5 through 9. You know, the children of Israel, they were squabbling, they were murmuring, they were disputing, they were complaining. Numbers 21, 5 through 9. And it says in Numbers 21, 5, it says, And the people spake against God. So children of Israel, they spake against God and against Moses. Moses was God's servant. It says, Wherefore have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? So God brought them out of Egypt across the Red Sea, parted the Red Sea, and he brought them up, and he gave them manna from heaven and, and water from the rock, but they were unhappy. He says, For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loath is this light bread. So the manna, they, they were complaining about it. You know, they were complaining. Loath is is uh, feel intense dislike or disgust. So that's what loatheth means. So they were they had this total disgust for this bread, the manna. And the Lord sent. So God said, you know what? You people going to be complaining about what I did for you? So I watched it. And the Lord sent fiery serpents. So he sent serpents among the people and they bit the people and much of the people Israel died. So a lot of the people Israel died when the snakes bite them. God sent serpents because they were complaining. Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned. So they're like, hey, we don't need to, we got to come back to God. Moses, please t talk to God. We have sinned and we have spoken against the Lord and t against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. So Moses prayed for the people of Israel. And the Lord said unto Moses, so God said to Moses, make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole and it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten when he looks upon it shall live. You know, you look and live. There's a message from the Lord, hallelujah. There's a message that you look and live. So you got to look and live. And Moses made a serpent of brass in verse 9 and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if the serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. This is a picture of Jesus Christ to come in the future. If you look upon Jesus on that cross, you look and live. He died for you. It's a, it's a picture of Jesus you look and live, live eternally with the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, let's look at 1 Corinthians 10, 9 and 10. 1 Corinthians 10, 9 and 10. First Corinthians 10, 9 and 10. It says, neither let us tempt. So don't tempt Christ. So tempt, uh, you know, test him. As some of them also tempted. They tempted him. And like in here with the serpents, you know, he sent fiery serpents and were destroyed of the serpents. 
neither murmur, so you don't want to murmur, you don't want to complain, grumble, complain, ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. You know, so the people put the hyssop with the blood on the doorpost and the Lord came and he saw the blood and he passed. He told the destroyer not to go to that house. But if you didn't have that blood, you had it on the post, on the top, on the sides, and makes a cross, amen. And the, the, the Lord passed, would pass the house and he would tell the destroyer not. But if, if you didn't have that blood, the Lord would send the destroyer to kill the first child and... Uh, you know, now all these things happen unto them for in samples. So these are examples, patterns, models for us, and they are written for our admonition. You know, our admonition, so we know our warning, our reproof un upon whom the end of the worlds are come. So we need to put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ and don't squabble, don't complain, do his will till he comes. Amen. Um, Let's look at James 5, 9 and 10. James 5, 9 and 10. James 5, 9 and 10. It says, grudge not one against another. So, you know, don't harbor hostility, sign, groan, complain, not one against another, brethren. So these are people, saved people in Christ. We don't want to complain with each other. Lest ye be condemned, behold, the judge standeth before the door. So, you know, Jesus Christ stands and he's, you know, if he's in the church, he's watching what we're doing. We're in his church. We need to lift him up and we have to be, you know, do, do things from our heart will, willingly serve the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, take my brethren, the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering affliction of patience. You know, the prophets, these people suffered and died afflictions and they were killed and, you know, they were patient and they didn't complain. So we need not complain. I mean, times now in America, you know, we still got it good. We can come to church, we can serve God, we can worship God. There's nobody threatening us or trying to kill us as other countries in the world. So we need to, you know, be happy and be thankful that we're free, that we have freedom in this country. You know, uh, again, like I said, Memorial Day is coming up and, the, you know, people died for our freedoms. World War One, World War Two. you know, uh, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, uh, uh, Desert Storm. I mean, people for freedom. They fought for freedoms for us and people's freedoms all around the world and died. People to kids today, they could care less. They got freedom. They have what they want. They don't realize people fought and died for us. You know, and Jesus died for us for our sin to go with him in eternity. So we need to lift him up and uh, trust, you know, in what he did. And this, you know, don't complain or squabble when we do things with Jesus. Because you know what? We're going. If you trust the Lord, you're going to heaven. That's the greatest gift of all. Uh, let's look at... Uh, Let's look at verse 15 of Philippians 2. It says that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom ye shine as lights in the world. You know, the world, the country now is crooked, perverse, the whole, the whole nation. They're, they don't know right from wrong. You know, they don't know, you know, you know, telling kids they don't know if they're a girl or a boy or... You know, God made Adam and Eve. God made me a man. God made my wife a woman. And, you know, God God made what he made. And God is God. Amen? Give him the glory. Amen. You know, you can't change things. You can't, you, can't, you can't outdo God. God is God. And, you know, people make bad choices. It's your own fault. You know, it's not God's fault. You know, you need to study and make wise choices in the Bible. Study the Bible. Make wise choices. You know, people keep making bad choices and they wonder why bad things happen to them and you know what god god will bless you if you do god's will if you don't do god's will and you go against god you fight against god you're not going to win god's not going to bless you you know there's a lot of young people i try to talk to and i try to tell them hey you're on the wrong road back up trust the lord ask god to help you he'll help you you know but kids want everything fast now they want glory they want fame they want money you know 
and they're doing it the wrong way by, you know, doing stupid things, you know, they're jumping out of cars for people with masks and guns, robbing people, beating old people up, robbing people, uh, you know, carjacking people. You know, God, God's not happy with this. You know, I don't know what they're thinking they're going to be, you know, and, and they're young and they're, their lives are already, you know, wasted, you know, and they need to trust the Lord Jesus Christ and change them from the inside out, turn them into a new man. You know, programs ain't going to change them into better people. Jesus Christ will make them a new man in Jesus Christ. Let's look at Matthew 15, 16. Matthew 15, 16. Matthew 15, 16. You know, it says in verse 15, uh, Matthew 15, 16 says, I, I'm sorry, Matthew 5, 15 and 16. Matthew 5, 15 and 16. I'm looking at Philippians 2, verse 15. That's our text verse. It says that you may be blameless and harmless to sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation uh, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. You want to shine the light for Jesus in the world. Let's look at Matthew 5, 15. It says, Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on the candlestick, and giveth light unto all that are in the house. So you need to shine for Jesus. you got to stand up and shine. And it says, Let your light shine. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So you know what? Let Shine your light. Shine Jesus to people. Let people see you. You're working. You're, you're in God. God's in you. Shine for him. And you know what? They'll, they'll give glory. They'll turn from their sins, turn from their wicked ways to Jesus Christ and trust him as their Lord and Savior. You know, let your light, light shine for Jesus. You know, tell people, be that light. Isaiah 60, 1 through 3. Isaiah 60, 1 through 3. I mean, if we're not that light for people, who's going to tell? I don't know. When I'm at places, I don't see, if I don't give out a gospel track or tell somebody, you know, and Jesus died for you, you need to trust the Lord, I don't hear anybody saying anything about God, you know. Isaiah 60, 1 through 3. Isaiah 61 through 3. It says, Arise, shine. So we got to rise. We got to shine for Jesus. For the light has come. Jesus Christ came, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. So, you know, gross is uh, 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 thick, dense. The, the darkness is deep out in the world now. I mean, you, it's so. You know, if there's a light, if you give God's light, it shines a little bit, but, you know, shine, really shine. Give them a gospel track. Invite them to church. Tell them God, you know, give them John 3, 16. God, for God so loved the world that he gave his own begotten son, that whosoever believed him should not perish, but have everlasting life, that they can have everlasting life. And it says, Behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness to people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen unto thee, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and the kings to the brightness of thy rising. So you need to shine for Jesus in this world. You need to arise. Praise God through Jesus Christ. The light has come and redeemed you. You're going to heaven, and he can redeem other others, but we have to, you know, tell people. You know, in the middle of this crooked, perverse nation, boys, girls, you know, Adam, Adam and Eve. God made Adam. God made, uh, God made Eve. So let's look at that. Let's look at Genesis 127. You know, they're trying to teach, you know, these things like a little boy playing with some girls, you know, five, six years old, the girls playing with dolls, and a little boy walks over there and he starts playing with the dolls. And it's, oh, yeah, well, maybe, you know, Jimmy, he might be a girl because, see, he's playing with the dolls, you know. They're trying to pervert, and, and it's, a, it's a pervert and a perverse nation. It's crooked. They were trying to change God's plan. So let's look at Genesis 1.27. Genesis 1.27. Genesis 1.27. It says, so God created man in his own image. So we're cre I'm creating God's image, man. Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the... Uh, uh, so God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him. So he made man in his image, male and, male and female created 
he, them. So he made male, he made female. And now let's look at Genesis 2, 21 to 25. Genesis 2, 21 to 25. You know, the only thing I was worried about, man, when I was like five or six when I started kindergarten till even eighth grade, I recess, go home for lunch, play. When I got off, ride my bike, play sports, you know. The stuff they're teaching now, they're trying to ruin these kids and you know, it's somebody, wicked people in high places. Wicked people in high places. So let's look at Genesis 2, 21 to 25. It says, And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. So he put Adam to sleep, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God has taken from man, so he took a rib out of man, he made woman. So thank God for woman. Amen. And he brought, and it says, and he said, he, he made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother. So a man's supposed to leave his father and mother at home and then cleave unto his wife. So you're supposed to cling to her. And you two become one flesh. And, they, and then it says, They were both naked, the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. Because they were not ashamed. Because they had no sin yet. They didn't disobey God. So when you disobey God, you're going to have sin. The more you disobey God, the more God's not going to be happy with you. But if you obey God, God's going to you know, he'll be with you and bless you. But God made Adam, and he took a rib, and made woman. And he says, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother... So you leave your family, your mother, father, and cleave. So you cling unto your wife, and they shall be one flesh. So they should be one. You know, God knew what he was doing. The world doesn't know what they're doing. Now they're, 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 they're headed for, they're for hell, for the devil, for his ways, you know. 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 4. 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 4. It says, I charge thee, so you know, I command thee before, therefore before God. So I command you before God, and the Lord Jesus Christ shall judge the quick. So he's going to judge the living and the dead it is appearing in his kingdom. So he's going to judge, you know, the people who are saved, who are dead, who are alive, they're going to heaven. They're going to meet the Lord in the air. The people who are not saved, the dead is appearing, they're going to be judged. They're going to hell. Preach the word. So we need to preach the word. We need to tell people about Jesus you know, be instant in season, so you got to be urgent, insistent. You got to tell people, hey, you need to trust the Lord. You know, where, where are you going to where are you going to go when you die? Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove. So you need to rebuke. You know, you know, you need to convict people that they need Jesus Christ. That you know what? Without Jesus Christ, they're going to die and go to hell. Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. You know, it's hard to tell people who you grew up with in your family, if you were sinning, because we all have sin, we sinned before. Before you trusted Jesus Christ, they think of us how we used to be. And now you're trying to tell them about Jesus, and they're looking at you. But you got to have long-suffering, and you got to have God's doctrine, the Holy Bible, His Word, to tell them to trust Jesus Christ. It says, For the time will come when, when they will not endure sound doctrine. So... You know what? They're not gonna. They're not gonna endure it. You know, we got to be urgent, persistent, earnest in telling them other, in telling our family and others about Jesus Christ, because they're not. They're not gonna. They're not gonna listen. Soon they're gonna. It says for the time will come when they'll they'll not endure sound doctrine. So it's it's healthy doctrine. The King James Bible, God's holy word, is sound doctrine that we need to live and teach and preach to others to tell them how to get to heaven. Soon, it says they will not, time will come when they'll not endure. They won't be able to handle sound doctrine. But after their own lust, so after their own lust, they got lust, they're going to be, uh, their strong desires, they shall heap to themselves teachers having itching, itching ears. So they're going to go to somewhere, a church that doesn't tell, you know, Jesus died for them, shed his blood to cleanse them from all sins. You know, Jesus loves you. It doesn't matter. Come, you don't have to do anything. You're going to heaven. No, it's going to be it tickling their ears. That's what they want to hear because in the world, 
They don't want to leave their sin. They want to keep their sin. They want God. Oh, I know God, but you know I'm out drinking, smoking, you know, robbing people. I know God. I trust Jesus. Yeah, and cheating on their wife or doing this and that. They're, they're itching ears. They want to hear somebody tell them, you know, you can do all these things. It doesn't matter. You're still going to heaven. You're not going to go to heaven. You can go to hell. And he says, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth. So they're going to turn away from the truth. They're not going to want to hear this King James Bible preached or taught to them. Or, or, or They don't want to hear this. And so be turned on the fable. So fables are like, you know, stories. You know, a story, it's, it's, not, it's not true. It's a fake. It, they, want to, they, want to hear, uh, they want to hear what they want to hear. And then it says, uh, But watch, thou in all things endure afflictions, do the work of evangelists, make full proof of thy ministry. So we got. I got to teach. You got to teach. We got to tell people about Jesus Christ. We got to preach the word. Give out tracts. You know, they're not. Pretty soon, they're not going to want to hear. You know. You know. We need to do it today. Amen. Uh, let's look at Psalm 119, 103 to 105. Psalm 119, 103 to 105. You know, I I, I try to talk to kids and tell them, you know, you need to trust the Lord, and it just seems like it's sometimes it's, you know what, you got to keep trying. You got to keep trying. You keep keep instilling God's word to them. Give them a track. Say, hey, man, I'm praying for you. I'm praying that God helps you and your family. No matter if they're doing wrong, maybe the light will shine and they'll turn to Jesus Christ and ask them to forgive their sins and they'll get saved. Amen. Let's look at uh, Psalms 119, 103 to 105. It says, How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false ways. You know, God's word, the Holy Bible, it's light unto my... It's, uh, it's, uh, and then it says in verse uh, 105, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So, you know, I, I hate false. We don't want to teach nothing false. We want to tell people the truth, God's ways, His precepts, you know, how to get saved, how to trust the Lord Jesus. Turn from your sin. Give it to Jesus Christ. He died on the cross. He paid for the sin. He beat hell, grave, death, the devil. He beat sin. He beat, He's God. Amen. And one day He's coming back to rapture, or come, coming back to meet people in the air. When the trumpet blows, he's coming back, and then the dead in Christ shall rise first, meet him in the air, and then we which are alive will meet him in the air. And you know what? God's word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. So study your Bible, it gives you light. It shows you how you live this life. God's word, the Holy Bible, it is light unto my, our, unto my path, your path, and to our feet how we should live for Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's look at John 8.12. John 8.12. You know, we need to shine that light. We need to shine Jesus to people. We've got to tell people about Jesus. Only through Jesus Christ can we go to heaven. Only through Jesus Christ you can come back to God the Father. Only through Jesus Christ you can do these things. Without Christ, you can't do anything. John 8.12 says, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. So if you follow Jesus and his word, you know what? You're going to have the, he's the light of the world, you know. He's sitting at the right hand of God the Father now in heaven. And if we follow from his word and follow what Jesus wants us to do, we'll be, we stay on, on the path. We follow his light and stay on his path. We stay in the light of Jesus Christ, you know. You know, we were once in darkness, now we're in the light. We're in Jesus Christ. We're in the light of Jesus. Amen. You know, we know we need to be live in the fruit of the spirit. What are the fruit what is the fruit of the spirit? Name some fruits fruit of the spirit. What is it? Love, joy, peace. Love, joy, peace. Fruit Long of the spirit. Temperance. Temperance, yes, Meekness. yes. Meekness. Faith. Faith? Gentleness, goodness, and long suffering. So, the fruit of the Spirit. Well, let's look at it. Uh, let's look. Uh, let's go to Ephesians. Let's go to Ephesians first. Let's look at Ephesians 5, 8, and 9. And we're going to go 5, 8, and 9. Galatians. 
Ephesians 5, 8, 9. We're going to go first. And uh, it says, Ephesians 5, 8, 9, For ye were sometimes, so, you know, uh, we were once, we were formerly, we were in darkness. I was in darkness. I was in all real darkness. But it says, For ye were sometimes darkness, but now, but now, I trusted Jesus, I were in the light of the Lord, walk as children of light, fruit of, fruit of, fruit of the Spirit, is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. So the fruit of the Spirit is in and through Jesus Christ, and it's in us and in all righteousness and truth. So now let's go to Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. It says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lusts. So you know what? If you're in Jesus Christ, you crucify the flesh. You live in the Spirit. You tell, you shine for Jesus Christ. You tell others about Jesus. You know, and there's others are in deep darkness, they need the light. They need Jesus. People in this world, they need Jesus. Let's look at 2 Corinthians 4, 3 through 7. You know, we got to shine. If we don't shine, who's going to shine in this world? You need to tell people about Jesus. You need to study your King James Bible. You need to grab a handful of gospel tracts. You need to get out there and get busy for Jesus to tell people about him, what he did for them. 2 Corinthians 4, 3 through 7. 2 Corinthians 4, 3 through 7. It says, But if our gospel is hid, it is hid to them that are lost. So the people who are lost in the world, they don't know nothing. It's hid. It's hidden from them. They can't see it. They can't hear it. It's hidden. We need to tell them. We need to give them. we got to tell them about expose their sin. We need to tell them about Jesus Christ. And then it says in verse 4, In whom... The God of this world, which is the devil, has blinded the minds of them which believe not. So Satan blinds them. You know, he drugs, alcohol, sin, people want fame, glory. You know, they want to have fun, but it's not in Jesus Christ. You people are blessed for being in the church right now, hearing God's word. God's going to bless you. You got to live in Jesus. You know what? You got to have faith. These people in the world, they have faith in the world. You know what's going to take them to hell? It's not going to do nothing for them. It says, In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. But here's the good part. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ. So you're the one who shines that light to Jesus. Give them a gospel track. Tell them that, hey, Jesus loves you. Jesus died for you. It says, Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine upon them. So Jesus is the expressed image of God the Father. And you shine. It'll shine onto them. And that light will start breaking through. And it says, for we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord in ourselves, your servants for Jesus' sake. So we're Jesus' servants to tell others about him, how he died, how he was resurrected, how his blood saved us from all our sins and it can save anybody from all their sins if they turn and repent of their sins and turn to Jesus and ask him to forgive their sins and believe and trust what he did on the cross. And God's grace and his mercy, God saves them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and not ourselves for Jesus' sake. For God, you know, God, God the Father commanded the light to shine out of the darkness. He commanded that the light shine. And Jesus, he brought his son. He knew what he was going to do. He knew he was gonna, his son was going to die on the cross to shed his blood for our sins. It says, for God who commanded the light to shine out of the darkness has shined in our hearts. He shined in our hearts so we can tell others about him. And to, give the light of the, and to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And it says, But we have this treasure in earth in vessels, and, the, and that the excellency of the power may be God and not of us. So it's not about us. God works through us to do his will and for his pleasure. He shines through us so people can come to him. Amen. And come back to him. God made them. God made every single human being on this world. And, you know, he wants them to come back to him. But he gives them free will. You choose. You can choose God 
You can choose the world or you can choose God. You can choose heaven or you can choose hell. You need to turn and turn to Jesus Christ. So God commanded the, the light to shine out of the darkness through the knowledge of his son, Jesus Christ. You know, well, the lost, we need to reach them, to teach them, to preach to them and turn them from darkness and turn them to the light, turn them to Jesus Christ. Um, let's look at verse 16. Holding... In Philippians 2, it says, holding forth the word of life. So the word of life is Jesus Christ. It's, it's, that's, that's life. That I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. So if you do whatever you've done for Jesus, you know, you're not doing it and you're not running in vain. You're not running the race. You're not laboring. What you do for, you know, you give out the gospel, you tell people about Jesus, they can have everlasting life, they can have heaven, they can be forever with Jesus Christ. And, you know, uh, run the race. Don't run fast. If you run fast, you get tired. Run at a steady pace. Run at your pace, but finish the race. A lot of people quit. A lot of people left the church. We had many people, kids, when they were young in church, but the world, God the devil, allured them with things in the world, and they left. They walked away from God. You know what? Maybe one day we pray they come back to God. You know, if it's instilled in them, they'll come back. You know, it says uh, teach a child when he's young, and then, you know, he'll come back. When he's older, come back to God. You know, don't be a castaway. Many people quit the race. Don't give up. You know, be in it for the long run. You know, be in the marathon for Jesus till he comes. Amen. Run the race till he comes. Be in heaven. You know, first, you know, one day he's coming back and he's he, he, he's gonna he's gonna take us with him. So we are we already won. You know, let's look at First Thessalonians five sixteen and eighteen. First Thessalonians five. 16 through 18. First Thess you know, run the race. You know, First, First Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 says, Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks for this, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So we've got to rejoice evermore, we've got to pray without ceasing. Let's look at Zephaniah 317. Zephaniah. 317. Zephaniah 3.17. Go to Matthew and go back a few books. Zephaniah 3.17. It says, The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. So God does the saving. He can save anybody. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. So, you know, God's going to praise you. God sings. God sings. God, God likes us singing songs to him and giving him the glory. Uh, let's look at Romans 12.12. 12. A few more verses and we're done. Romans 12.12. 12. Romans 12.12. 12. You know, we got to be that light. we got to shine the light to people. We need to shine Jesus on people. Romans 12.12. 12. It says, Rejoice in hope, patience in tribulation, continuing instance in prayer. So we got to rejoice. we got to hope. we got to have that hope. Rejoice with Jesus. Be patient in our problems, our trials, or tribulations, because God's with us. It doesn't matter. He's with us. He'll help us. Be constant in prayer. Always pray. Whenever you have a problem, first thing you do is get on your knees and pray and ask God to help you. Uh, you know, Let's look at Philippians 4.4. Philippians 4.4 4. Philippians 4.4 4 says Rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice so we got to rejoice in Jesus Christ we got to hope, we got to put our trust we got to rejoice again and again uh, Psalm 118.24 Psalm 118.24 Psalm 118.24 says, This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So we're in church right now. Praise God. Praise the Lord. We rejoice in the day. God made this day and we're in it. Amen. And, uh, you know, day the Lord made. Rejoice, be glad. I say rejoice. Last verse, 1 Peter 1.8 and 9. Last verse, 1 Peter 1.8 and 9. We got to be that light, because if we're not that light, there's 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 no hope for these other people. You know, our family, our friends. We got to tell them. Without our telling them, 
There's no hope. First Peter 1, 8 and 9. It says, Whom having not seen, I haven't seen Jesus, but I know he's real. It says, Whom have you not seen, you love. I love Jesus. I haven't seen him. And whom thou you now you see him not, so yet believing. So I haven't seen him. I believe. I believe Jesus died for me. I believe he's coming back and he's taking me to heaven. And it says, You rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. So I rejoice, like that song. There's joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. There is joy unspeakable and full of glory, for the half has never yet been told. We're going to heaven. So you know what? Trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And verse 9, last verse. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. So you got to have our faith till Jesus comes. Keep your faith in Jesus Christ. You know what? Tell others, we're saved. You're going to heaven. If you're not saved, you need to come. Ask God to forgive you. Truly mean it. Give it all. Give it to him. He paid for it. Jesus Christ paid for it. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I pray for for souls. I pray for winning people to you, Lord. I pray that you'd give us boldness and that we'd be witnesses for you and we'd be that light to shine in this dark world, Lord. That we may reach some people for you, Lord. Lord, we pray that you just... uh, Give us your power and through the Holy Ghost that just lead us and guide us and uh, be a light to our path to tell people about you at work, at, at home, and uh, all our friends, family, and just strangers, to our enemies, to everybody, to teach, preach, and tell them about you, how they can get to heaven too. Lord, I pray for, for just uh, people who are sick. I pray for your healing hand upon them. And Lord, I pray that... Uh, you bless us and keep us in your will and keep us safe in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Let's sing 359. 359. Near to the heart of God. 359. 359. There is a place of quiet rest. Near to the heart of God, a place where sin cannot molest. Near to the heart of God, O Jesus, blessed Redeemer, sent from the heart of God, hold us who wait before Thee. Near to the heart of God. There is a place of comfort sweet. Near to the heart of God. A place where we our Savior meet. Near to the heart of God. O Jesus, blessed Redeemer. Send from the heart of God, hold us who wait before thee, near to the heart of God. There is a place of full release, near to the heart of God, a place where all is joy and peace. Near to the heart of God. O Jesus, bless Redeemer, sent from the heart of God. Hold us who wait before thee, near to the heart of God. You know, stand near to the heart of God. Pray to him. You know what? Again, tell somebody about Jesus. Thank a veteran for freedoms we have in this country. And tell that veteran about Jesus Christ. I can save their soul too. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you for the service. Thank you for your words. Thank you for the people that are here. Bless them, Lord. And Lord, I pray for uh, your hedge of protection around us. Give us safety on the way home. and uh, Tomorrow at work and through the weekend and uh, Memorial Day, Lord. Lord, I pray for... Uh, that we can just tell people about you and uh, tell them about your freedom, freedom in you, Lord. I pray that you get all the glory in Jesus' precious name. Amen.
Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, in the city of our God, in the mountain of His holiness, beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth, is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great King. Steve Sajak in Texas, and uh, Rogers Baptist Church, and Pastor Travers Gilbert, his family, Hi, Pastor Thomas, Mrs. Thomas, uh, Pastor Zorik, Mazan Baptist Church, Bridgeview Baptist Church with uh, Pastor Clark and his family there, uh, Pastor Stiller in Wisconsin, Pastor French Victory, Ken Jenkins, we miss you, come back, you went to D.C., Ken was here every week, now he's been gone a couple months, we pray that you come back, Ken, and God will bless you and keep you safe, and uh, Jim Schaller, my men's Bible group on Monday. Hi, people. Matthew, I pray that God saves Matthew's soul. Amen. Um, Lord, uh, till, till, till we come in, let me pray. Dear Lord, I pray I pray for Matthew. I pray for these men. I pray for the sick people we mentioned early in prayer before the service started. I pray that you'd help them and use your healing hand. And Lord, be with them with these surgeries and all these different people. In Jesus' name, amen. Also for the Hawkins and uh, Miss Rebecca Hawkins for her health needs, we pray that God helps her in his healing hand. And uh, Pastor Harbin and Mrs. Harbin, and just bless them all. So many people we know and love in this in this country and around the world, bless them. We pray for Mickey's father, Boon Cham, and, um, you know, uh, me, who's in the hospital, he's recovering in Thailand. And uh, God bless us and bless them and keep us safe until we meet again on Sunday. Amen.